Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and we're back with Channel 17, CCTV, or Town Meeting TV, and what's happening, which we had to stop because of COVID many months ago, and we're delighted to be back, and we thank CCTV for making in-person broadcasts possible again, a kind of a civic journalism that we're all happy about. I'm here today with a colleague of mine, Joy Hopkins, and we're going to be talking today about what's happening and what's going on in the world since the shutdowns and since the pandemic. A new world is dawning with us, and Joy has been observing it all these months, <laughs> and so I'm going to ask her to tell me what her observations are, since she is a very sharp observer of reality. What's happening? <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Some yeah. people might argue with me. I know. Now, but, well, they'd argue but, it about me, too. <laughs> but we are taking the opportunity, because is the show what's going on? Like yeah, the great, yeah, that's right. Uh, and, and a lot of times I do wonder what is going on. So I had a job, I was laid off, and I applied for unemployment. And through a lot of uh, kind of loops, for instance, just the short version, you, you go online and they'll say, you have to verify your birthday, for instance. Uh, call this claim and assistance line. Call? Yeah, then you call the claim and assistance line and you might be caller 392 or 300? 14 or we'll call you back and then maybe four hours get a phone call and then redirect you and then it takes all this time. So anyway, about eight weeks went by and I had not had any adjudication on this claim and I had read in the paper that supposedly 80% of filers were fraudulent and I just thought that what? doesn't make any sense to me. That was just a figure that was 80% mm -hmm. of the filers were fraudulent and that it was some internet scam or whatever. So I just thought, I'm going to look into this a mm -hmm. little more. So there are many articles in the paper about unemployment. There was a woman, uh, 72 in my age uh, bracket, waited 14 weeks mm. to get through everything. By getting through, you mean to get a check in the end, right? Yes, to yeah. get through to someone, yeah. to get everything working, and to receive any benefit, mm -hmm. even one week, anything. Because at that point, as you know, there's a cataclysm of events. Once yeah. you've missed your rent once, twice, well, you could be evicted. Yeah. So anyway, I read everything I could read locally about this, and I came across this company that was called Maximus that that was mentioned just lightly in one of these articles. So I started to look into it. And I'm just going to read the letter that I sent Doug Hoffer. Who's the um, auditor. He's a lot, the auditor. And this will kind of set the um, situation if we want to talk further, mm -hmm. or you want to ask me questions about what I have found out. This is by no means a journalistic uh, enterprise. It's just notes that I've taken mm -hmm. on a couple of uh, what I see is a really large scale um, systems change that really is going to make departments of state government and maybe federal government obsolete and redundant. Mm -hmm. This is what I wrote. Uh, I'm very concerned that the state of Vermont has outsourced all social programs. Now that means Medicaid, Medicare, food stamps, unemployment, etc. with the addition of the company now handling veterans benefits. Uh, I believe that you will be unable to audit or even oversee the disbursement of, of state government funds. I've been waiting for, this is at this time, everything's been resolved uh, for the record. I have been, at this time of this letter, this was true, I've been waiting for nine weeks for unemployment benefits. I cannot pay rent, phone, etc., and am in uh, hardship due to the failure of the unemployment program. I have spoken to over 20 phone agents and two supervisors. This is becoming a scandal. How many people are in my situation? Please look into this. It feels like the fraud is on the part of Maximus. In fact, Maximus had been convicted of fraud in 2018 and had to return $30 million. To whom? To the state of Virginia. 
Google it. Are you aware that 20 states are using Maximus, including New York State? And the controller, the state controller in New York State said he cannot manage or oversee what's going on with these private companies. Okay, so this is a private company? It is. A corporation? I mean, you know, there's a lot of corporate law. Yeah, 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 it's right, hard to right, say right, right. what it is. But we'll get to that in a second. Are you aware that 20 states are using Maximus and they are in 20 countries? Countries? Countries, like Angola, et cetera. Uh, where is the accountability? Thank you very much for your interest. Sincerely yours. Okay, so in looking more at this, uh, here's Vermont. So just on a very simple level, Say we got two billion dollars. That's chump change in the trillion uh, from the trillion federal from government. The federal government. So let's think about this a minute. All that money is going to the states, but it really isn't. It's going to Maximus, and it is being handled uh, as a, a company that does this. Sends out checks. It does everything that. You would think a State Department of right, Labor right, would right, do, right, 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 okay, or uh, health and services, or whatever the state government. If they're handling food sa stamps, SNAP, mm -hmm. uh, what do Reach the up. workers do if they don't dispense funds? What are the workers doing in those departments if Maximus is handling all of the applications, all of the uh, approvals, and, and dispensing they are. of funds? And that is what's happening, correct? I don't have all the specifics, but that is what they do. And I just read recently that they are now managing VA benefits mm. in 18 states. So the money comes from the feds into the state of Vermont, but it goes to this company called yeah. Maximus. And then Maximus doles out yes. the benefits. And I believe it is also in the medical field. So mm. there's some dovetailing because we have Medicaid... Uh, has another corporation, Paradigm, which I don't know enough about, right. but that handles managed care, people that are on Medicaid, and handling uh, their lifetime issues uh, regarding insurance yeah. and so on and yeah. so forth. They're all kind of hard to understand, yeah, right. laws that we really can't follow up on, and are gargantuan. Mm -hmm. So... Um, when I looked, I was kind of aghast at when I just thought, wow, if Vermont was even being managed by the same company as managing New York City, it's just such oh my a God. disparate. Mm -hmm. So once I was in this uh, situation and I looked up some details, oh, uh, and um, I can get back to that uh, letter, but because he did answer, I, I should do the answer. Um, so before I go, but um, so it's a provider of health and human services worldwide, okay? Maximus, That's a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. So it was founded Jesus. in 1975 at 30,000 employees and 2.4 billion in annual revenue. Well, um, let's look at that. Let's say, let's not even go to a trillion, but it would make things easier. If our state got $2 billion and we were dispensing those funds in our own human services department, our own yeah. aid to needy families department, et cetera, then we get the administrative fees. Yeah. If we allow another company, a, a private company to do that, um, what? where are we? Right. So, you know, as because you're an attorney, you handle guardianships and so on. There's always an administrative fee that a person can charge. Can charge, right? And I'm sure that uh, this company is charging administrative fees. Otherwise, how would they uh, interest? Make money? I suppose. Right? Um, I don't know. So the bigger problem is if people aren't getting what they need, where do, who do they go to? Do they go to the corporation? Well, because I'm under the impression this this is a state government program. But when I get deeper into it, it seems like the state is, in fact, not administering its own funds. That's now, astounding. I also looked into astounding. what 
who are the major investors in yeah, this? Yeah, right. Now, a lot of them, the companies, I have not had time. I'm not, you know, this is something I just took a cursory look and was kind of, uh, I mean, I think we all know things are privatized, but the scale of this yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is huge. And when you looked at the scale of something like Halliburton yeah. in the Iraq war, right. it, the tail starts wagging the dog. Yes, exactly. Uh, right. There's a lot of interests that want to keep it going. Mm -hmm. The factioning in what we should be doing. and uh, So it's, it's a real dangerous... Um, situation and then with the with the uh, COVID response we've got that problem too where we have the federal government giving whatever mm -hmm. let's say two billion maybe more I don't know to private uh, drug companies to make the vaccine right okay right so things go 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 but in fact uh, we're kind of skirting regular laws um, somebody has emergency powers and then things get changed and we're not really sure what the rules are right, and then right, the emergency right. powers um, and I think this is going to spill into a concern I have regarding the court so what seems to happen is uh, the government says okay you still have freedom of choice uh, about we're vaccines? not going to mandate that mm -hmm. you uh, get a vaccine if you have a health emergency or you don't want to or whatever. You still have your rights. But if the corporations where you work or Broadway, uh, the, all the theaters decide, you know, you have to show your papers wherever you go, then corporations are kind of enforcers mm -hmm. of an agenda mm -hmm. that kind of gets the government mm -hmm. still saying, we don't, you know. But it's a goal, possibly, mm -hmm. of both parties. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. I don't know where this is all leading. I know it's leading to citizens really being left out of the discussion completely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because if it's of the people, by the people, for the people, we can't even audit the, these billions that... And you notice all this money when they said infrastructure. Yeah, right. I'd like to see some roads, some bridges. I mean, I mean a building just fell down in Miami. I know, today. I saw that. I, saw that. I was in a building for my cousin's funeral, and I and you know my mother had passed away, and she left us a little money, and my cousin died, and I said I'm gonna go to his funeral, go to Miami. So I stayed in this hotel in on Key Biscayne. I could see everything, and at first I said, Wow. South Beach looks like it's sinking into the water. Mm -hmm. And I was in this taxi and I said, does, is this an illusion or does it look like it's sinking? And he said, oh, they have to pour sand. They, they bring up the sand uh -huh. and put it in front of the beaches. Mm -hmm. So it's everything's sort of a facade mm -hmm. of what it should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So infrastructure becomes lots more social programs, which I see going right into wow. Maximus. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, in looking at that, um, and this is gonna get, go far afield a little bit, because this will be the poetic linguistic side yeah. of this. So, Maximus sounds like a Saturday Night Live name for a company, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So then I was thinking, oh yeah, why do I think that's, a, oh yeah, Circus Maximus, yeah. like the Roman, Roman Empire. Empire yeah. And why did we have it to distract the masses? Mm -hmm. So they would just go and watch the Christians being eaten by lions mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, Killing each other. The other one is Paradigm, which yeah. I have just done a little bit. And that is managing, I mean, Medicaid funds. That's a lot of money, too. Managing care, managing the money, managing, I'm not sure how it works. But that name really indicates to me changes in structure, context, uh, fundamental principles. Mm -hmm. That's what a paradigm shift yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, right. It doesn't say shift, but the paradigm does feel like it's changing, especially for people in our age group, because we well, are used to a lot uh, of freedom. But all, right, we're, we are used I mean, to freedom the fact itself. The monitor on your phone, my kids say, it is, so what, Mom? I'm not doing anything. They don't find it uh, that their phone tracks them as that 
disturbing. So there's a lot of kind of trust and good uh, relations with Big Brother where... Well, I don't, I don't get this at all, especially because there's such Trump derangement syndrome. And people, though they hated Trump, they welcome Biden so much, they're not really looking at what's really going on under Biden. The um, other thing that really bothered me, and, and, and I don't want to think that, uh, that um, it's old-fashioned to want your freedoms I or know, it's a passe concept. I know. Uh, Especially because uh, people like you and I have always been dissenters. Always. Or, I, or just feel like I want to be in a, I don't want to be was surveilled. In talk radio. We, you know, we knew what the perimeters were, but, um, but you have to feel like you can discuss things. That's the basis humans. That's why we have language. It may not be the best thing, but it's all we've got. Well, it's also the way we, you can't create art very much in a totally unfree society. Well, and, and comedy is going to be I tough. I know. Because yeah, yeah. satire Nothing's right now. Nothing's very funny either because right now. Because people's lives feel like they have been threatened. Mm -hmm. Nothing, that's that's really serious stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so making jokes about it, uh, people then wouldn't be ready funny. for that. I know. It. It's not Would really not very, be ready I'm for right. that. But um, what did I want to say on, oh, so let's say I absolutely hate someone. Um, I was raised by these words. Uh, I may not agree with you, but I'll fight to the death for your right to say yes, it. Yes, exactly. If I say that now, it sounds like I'm a radical, you know, or yeah. I'm a, I, that's not for now. Mm -hmm. So when, when Trump and these companies, these international, multinational uh, companies, have decided who can talk and who can't talk. Right. They've rendered government obsolete mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because rules around you being able to say things or you having the platform to say them, the censoring right now, I feel like if people are okay with censoring, if it censors the people they don't want to hear from. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's dangerous to of me. Course, of and course. And it's not looking at the big picture. When we have trends and indications that are happening like that, we've got to uh, look down the road. So what you're, but you're talking about kind of two different kinds of big companies, aren't you? Well, I'm talking about, about the reach. Yeah, yeah. And the replacing. Right. right of the systems we have. Right. So when people say the Great Reset, right. that's going to be the monetary system completely changed. That's true, but it's more than that, I think, too. Well, it's going to be yeah. crypto. Yeah. You'll be able to, uh, you know, you or won't have cash. Cards. You won't, the black market economy might be barter. Barter might be outlawed. What, just what's happening is an unraveling of our traditional uh, way of life and rights to give it to a overarching, a, even Alan Newman today on um, a morning show with Kurt Wright and Marcus, he said he's a globalist. Hmm. The people, because people want one world, da, 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 but the, 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 the labor, as in having a birth, is going to be long, hard, and we're not really consciously choosing it. It's coming no, right. from, it's coming down on us. We're adjusting to it, but it bothers me that a former president, regardless of whether you like people him or not. approve of him or not, or whether whatever, that that person's denied the airwaves. Right. Then sometimes I was thinking, is he still around? I mean, it seems like no matter what, even GW, who know who there was sort of collective dislike for um, George W. Bush, um, I think he sat down with 60 Minutes a mm -hmm. few weeks after. But they won't. But 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 they they will not, not do it. Right. But they this is it. what I'm saying. This I know. is how people I know. talk. I know. Who are they? I know. Who is preventing people from speaking? I, I, I was going to ask you about that. Is that the big internet companies like Google? 
Well, I think when Twitter, you Twitter, Instagram, they're the ones that take stuff off YouTube, right? Well, I think it's been like 200 million people have been removed from Facebook for discussing things that Facebook decides around uh, the Virus. infection and so on. Right. Uh, they've been removed. Um, but right now, because there's a collective, uh, that's okay, mm -hmm. because the people that are getting censored are perceived as, as dangerous. That's right, mainly Trump supporters. Um, but that, yeah, Th that has a that bites you in the rear in sure. the long run. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a concern I have because I just see these mega mega things uh, without any accountability mm -hmm. and really, to me, rendering government obsolete. Right, and that actually, if you're going for a globalist like uh, Agenda 2030, which is the UN sort of mm -hmm. plan for the world. That is the idea, that nationalism is preventing the world right. from getting organized and being more... Um, Powerful. Yeah, but say the UN would decide water conservation, decide where people will live, decide, and this is for the greater good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that is, a I mean, I think in elementary science, right? The blood cells get together and create tissue and then the mm -hmm. tissue creates an organ. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of doing that as a society. Mm -hmm. There's a move towards another well, entity. Thing, some of the stuff that has bothered me is that what I see in place is huge companies profiting from uh, everything, I guess, um, but being allowed to do so by our federal government and sort of it's a partnership right with, like for instance between big pharma big media big government and really the people in washington more but and also more. i think that it's a myth for me mm -hmm. to look at oh the democrats the republicans know, right, they're right, right, right. all paid right. by those very companies exactly That's everybody's I mean. paid by the same people right but I think this snuck up on people because they thought that that partnership would be really with Trump because he's a Republican and he's a billionaire. But in fact, this, the tightening of that partnership has been really with Biden more than with Trump because we've seen that partnership have more and more power with the election of Biden. Um, and that's the part that, and people seem kind of duped. Well, by the I guess whole thing. for both of them, I say two wrongs don't make a right. I know that, of course. I mean, I, I to see uh, to see this uh, as you know to see them as a solution. No, no, of course, uh, of right. course, was wrong. But, but I mean, right. that's the that's right. sort of the um, imprint we're we're left with. Right. Oh, what a relief! Isn't he great? Because uh, he's Either like a nice, kindly and, grandfather. And you're not allowed to criticize right. it. But, you know, and I heard Schumer going off on Trump. It's like, guys. Over, know, he's gone. Forget about it. I know it. So I, I don't trust them anymore. I see them all cut out of the same piece Me of Me too, Me, but I always did. So I never had any real personal feelings about Trump or really Biden. I just saw them as two figureheads of the same regime. You know, that two cliques, put it that way. And now the other clique is in power. But So how about on an international scale, too? We've had uh, Iran th yeah. uh, in Argentina and um, the Russian uh, destroyer 35 miles off of Hawaii. Yeah. And we're just like, what's going on? Nobody I knows mean, anything. I mean, I feel like we got a new landlord. Maybe we were maybe went in, into debt to uh, China and we're kind of getting managed, so it just feels different. That's all I know. As a citizen, I'm extremely confused with what's going on. I think everybody is. Can I mention one other thing? We only have five minutes. We were going to talk a little bit about oh. this privatization. Oh, in the Odyssey. Court. Yeah, also. in the court. What I've noticed, as you've said, I'm a lawyer, right? So since the pandemic started and the shutdowns, the court also switched to an entirely electronic system, which nobody can work. And there's and no blowback. From because we have a why, and the, there are a couple of reasons. One, because attorneys, no matter how feisty they are, tend to go along with, with what the court is going to say. Because frankly, you don't want to get in trouble with the court. They could yank your license, right? 
Um, Which, but still, to put everything online, then I yeah. looked up Idacy, and I don't have enough. That's what know. it's called. Okay, but it's okay. Uh, that's that's owned or a subsidiary of the Tyler Corporation. Yeah. So once again, do we want our courts being managed by private corporations? I don't. Do I people know it? No. Do our legislators no. and know you know it? why they don't? Well, I I don't I don't have time to read this, but what Doug Hoffer wrote back, which I was yeah. really thrilled that he did, and was. Um, he, he really laid it out all state. Thanks for your notes. Sadly, I hear of others in your situation. I will contact the department, but will not use your name without your approval. I told him he could use my name. Uh, FYI, all state contracts with vendors like Maximus include audit provisions in the boilerplate contract language. Vendors are required to provide any and all documents related to performance at our request. Mm. That's a little different than being able to get in and see the books and mm. figure out who got their benefits, mm -hmm. who didn't. Anyway, I'm sure it's a management nightmare. I know nothing about it. I'm just a little old citizen asking a few questions. Well, I, there, unfortunately, too few citizens are asking questions. That's why I think it's so important that all of us continue to do that, and I'm happy to talk to you about because it is totally confusing. The court has, the, what happened during the pandemic and the shutdowns was uh, that the other thing that happens, people are absolutely isolated from each other. So if I were still going to court during this year and this had happened, uh, which of course the court, courts were closed anyway, I would see other lawyers. This year, I haven't seen any other lawyers because we're all sitting in our offices on Zoom or on Odyssey, and there's been complete lack of being able to organize politically. And we just looked at um, the uh, Vermont Law School, what is that called, where you did Law Line? Yeah, Vermont Legal Aid, Vermont Law Line. Still closed. Still closed, yeah. But, and with no... I mean, this place, that's why I'm so grateful in a way that this place has reopened because this, this place, CCTV, is kind of a citizen journalist um, organization. Well, just anyone could, could used to. Be, yep. use the airways, yeah, right. which is what we need. Which is what we're doing right now, actually. But one other thing about the courts, and then I think we should close, it, what I've seen happen is that who can use this electronic system? not new Americans, they don't have computers, they don't have language, they don't have the skills. So are skills. you saying as a client, I would have to be in Odyssey too? They per per prefer that. I got a call from a woman. And I don't want a private corporation privy to what is privileged information exactly. with my attorney. Exactly. So that's what's happening. The whole happened. thing is fraught with problems, Sandra. That no one can use these systems either. That's another huge problem. But with that, maybe there's a lot more to say. And it certainly isn't anything like democracy. And in fact, City Hall, remember, is still closed. It is? Yes, so you can't go there and complain. Shame on you. Why don't they want to open? I don't, because they can control all dissent that way. In other words, I used to be able to go down to City Hall the, in, during the meetings and sit there, and there would be a right, public forum. Course, yeah. And you could give a talk to your right. city councilors. No more. You can't go there. And in fact, if you're on Zoom waiting on, to talk to your city on Zoom, how many hours is that going to take? And it gives the politicians, they can organize who's on Zoom and who isn't. There's just a total sea change in everything. I don't, but the problem is everybody thinks it's going to go back. I don't. It's too convenient for the big profiteers, and it's too convenient for the big politicians as well. Anyway, so I think we should close for okay, today Sandy, and then be back. You. No, thank you. <laughs> and thank you, CCTV, for letting us rant a little. Bye.